And we're back. I was worried for a moment there, it wouldn't re resume properly. Hi Shadow Dog 500. Sorry I was offline when you arrived. Hope you're still here.
lesson I've learned today is if you pause your stream, everybody leaves. So there's a key in the side of the shaft there, which presumably helps ensure that, that tightens appropriately. I have a few people now. Welcome back. Sorry about the downtime. So these two screws which hold in the bevel edged part are really really stuck and their slots are full of grime. So I'm using oil and a toothpick, toothpick to try and liberate that out a bit.
So the screwdriver I have, which is wide enough to engage with the screw properly, is a little bit too thick to actually get in the slot. So I'm going to give it a quick trim, see if I can Mostly I'm just taking some of the burrs off it. And this rubbish little electric screwdriver is now bent. That part is going to have to wait until I've got better screwdrivers. Thanks for the tip, Shadow Dog, about potentially moving this spanner ring. That looks about two and a half mil. Let's see if a two and a half millimeter drill bit will do anything. Too big. The hole really isn't very deep, so it's difficult to get purchase on it with a round shaft. Just checking the direction of the thread is a standard right hand.
So back to the chuck. Those screws seem to have had to think about what they did. And at least one of them is coming out now. Been some solder repair work done on that. I'm just checking to see whether the screw has been soldered in. Don't think so. And it's out. The register on the collet adapter was very snug, possibly a bit of corrosion holding it in place, but that's off now. And we have three new screws, which I'm guessing hold this ring in place at the back and also possibly these plates on the front. So before I do that, I'm going to pop that back in for a sec and make a careful note of the different numbers on the three jaws. There's an oval shape under the rust there, which looks as though it might have been a brand mark.
know, with the oval at the top, the one is on the left and the two is on the right. A message for my future self. These screws are easy to remove, but the screwdriver is really the wrong size for them, so I'm being really careful to avoid damage. Just using oil to destroy, to dissolve a bit of the grime, which makes it very hard to see what's going on. So the inner ring has shifted slightly when I tightened the jaws against the outer ring. And I'm wondering if it's threaded in place and the screws were just stopping it from turning.
any experts on how scroll chucks work on the chat on the uh, chat i would welcome your input the scroll is definitely attached to the outer ring This inner part, which had all the screws in, despite all the screws being removed and there clearly being signs that it has shifted since I removed the screws. Is very, very firmly in place and I can't move it. There's some really, really old looking crud in here. Aha. Looks like I was trying to remove the wrong thing. So with the face of the chuck and the ring, normally of which move relative to each other, with both of those hold stationary, this ring moves from the position it was held by the screws, maybe about 20 degrees. All the screws are removed at this point. I'm going to have to lean over to read properly. I don't know how to pronounce your name, but thank you for the uh, question.
Yeah, average Joe, you're right. I need much better screwdrivers. I keep an electrical screwdriver um, in the house because I'm ultra paranoid. So even when I have the circuit turned off, I still check it. Let's have a try. Is that uh, Tim's Mick? Not enough vowels. At least for me. So that's not loosening up. It's it's basically it moves exactly exactly that distance and then comes to a clean stop. So I'm guessing it's some kind of locking ring. And given that it was in that position with three screws holding it in place, it would make sense that the other position is the unlock position. The scroll movement is getting freer and freer over time as I think I think as the lubrication soaks in. I'm just reading your messages now. Thanks for the suggestions, Thomas. Um, this came with a lathe which was sold to me as a bowley. I haven't actually found solid evidence to back it up being a bowley, but I don't think this chuck was included an original part of the lathe. I think that's the manufacturer's mark there under all that corrosion. See if I can get the gack off. This is a super fine wire wool I use for furniture restoring.
Yeah, every single part of the lathe has exactly the same serial number on it. And this ch chuck does not. This has 304. So the chuck, I'm just about able to read on it. It says made in England. So that's definitely not Bowley. See if there's anything on the other faces. There's nothing on that one. It looks like it says the Bernard Chuck, but it's an unusual spelling if that's what it says. Definitely says made in England. So I'm just catching up on the chat. Thomas, I, I do you mean these feet here that the jaws were screwed by on, onto? Um, if that's what you mean, I can't get them out because when I bring them as far out as they'll go, they run up against the ring that's on the outside of the chuck that tightens it.
I've run the jaws all the way to the other end of their travel to see if it matters which end they're at. Oh. I just got the ring to shift up very slightly. There we go. And there comes the ring. With that removed, it looks as though the entire knurled wheel should just lift out. And there it comes. I haven't been paying attention while I've been doing all that. I'm just catching up. Excellent. So before I remove those feet, I'm going to take one more picture in case the video or the commentary are lost. So currently I have the jaws in the correct order. Um, I already thought of that a bit. Let's have a look at them, see if they have numbers on. Yep, it's numbered. Number one. Number two, as expected. And even though two is a trend, I'm going to check the third one. Number three. Thanks for that tip, though. So I think the threads would have been better off in their out position. There is a lot of, I think it's mostly brass chips in here. Number 
two. Number three. And number one. The ultrasonic clean is going to have plenty of work to do. So the bearing retainer on the headstock is showing no signs of giving up and I think I need to try and make up a tool to, to get that off safely and, uh, and without any further damage. So I'm going to call, uh, call that a stream. That is a whole bunch of bits and bobs, all of which is going to have to go into carefully sorted uh, boxes and containers until I've got it all completely through the cleaning process. With the carriage I basically found that um, some very very uh, gentle degreaser in the ultrasonic cleaner and then some super super fine wire wool got all the corrosion and gunk off without damaging the nickel at all. I didn't even need to resort to uh, rust dissolving. I'm just trying to work out how to pronounce that. Andrecht Zwingenberger. So I've never even heard of it. Oh. Andre und Zwingenberger. I have to face away from the microphone to look at the laptop. Sorry about that. I would do some Google searches for that brand, but my hands are uh, really not good for touching the keyboard at the moment. Thanks for everybody that dropped by and thanks especially to everybody who gave me um, all the hints and tips with what to do. Um, I'm very happy about how this went. Um, so I think I'm going to do it again. Much better than my last one. Oh, the DDR. Oh, it's a modern one. Interesting. I have the stream configured to uh, optimize quality over latency, um, which is probably not the best for actually holding a conversation.
I'm going to call this a stream done. And uh, if if you want to uh, carry on talking about this, I'll quite happily to do so in the comments on the video on my channel. Um, um, with that, look forward to doing another one of these in the future. Please let me know if there's anything you'd like to see done differently. And um, I'll see you again.